This is a performance of In C, Terry Riley's 1964 composition made up of just one page of music. It can actually take up to a couple hours to perform since the musicians pick and choose any of the small melodic phrases on the sheet and play them however they feel like. And that means no two performances are ever quite the same. Here we have a performance of Steve Reich's 1972 track, Clapping Music. It's a song made up of two people clapping. There's not even a melody, it's just rhythm. And then there's this. Compositions 1960 number no. 7 by Lamont Young. It's just two notes, as the sheet music instructs, to be held for a long time. Now that raises a kind of interesting question, doesn't it? If that's truly all it takes to make a piece of music, why the hell can't you finish anything? Minimalism. It's in vogue, it's clean, it's trendy, it's millennial gray, it's monetizable, Skrillex might be one of the best in recent years, and it's a great way to let people know that you're better than them. It's also a great way for creatives to actually sit down and get shit done for a change, but it's not exactly for the reasons that you might think. In order to get into the meat of everything here, I guess I'd be a bit remiss if we didn't at least take a quick sidebar to touch on minimalism as a movement in music, because it sort of lays the foundation for the ideas I wanted to impart with you in this video. My goal with this video is not to get you to make minimalist music, although, you know, feel free to try your hand at that if you feel so inclined, but rather to start thinking of making your music like a minimalist. And I promise you, if you can start to embrace that philosophy, not only will you sit down and get more music done, but I think it will make you a better and more effective musician. It's Gonna Rain, 1965. As a friend of mine said, you know, you've gotta hear this. Minimalism as a movement in music came about around the 1960s as a response to the idea of serialism, the hot and trendy idea of the day of using all 12 tones to compose music. And it sounds like this. One of the most well-known examples of this might be the experimental composer John Cage's work, 4 minutes 33 seconds, a piece performed by performing nothing at all, and arguably one of the most covered songs of all time, given how much we all sit down staring at our DAWs doing nothing and convincing ourselves that we're not just LARPing as musicians. Now, when you think of 433 as a piece of music, you might think to yourself, well, that's stupid, that's not even really music. And I encourage that line of thinking, but let's set that aside and I'm gonna give you something else to chew on here for a second. Back when I was in high school, I remember my art teacher giving us some kind of presentation on modern art, and a lot of it had that sort of minimalist leaning. And she showed us one painting in some gallery somewhere for a gajillion dollars that was just a big canvas covered in white paint. And I said, that's stupid, anyone could do that. And she said, but they did it. And let me tell you, as a 15-year-old dipshit who knew everything about everything, those four words blew my young mind. Now sure, minimalism isn't without its drawbacks and its critics, and it might be even argued that all this minimalist music stuff is just pretentious academic boomer garbage and it doesn't apply to modern music production if you want to make slapping bangers that get the kids going all wiggly on the tic-tac. But that's where you're wrong, friend. And as a millennial hipster with an expensive camera masquerading as a real musician underneath a bunch of pretty color grading, I'd like to tell you why. I guess what I want to ask you here is this. What do you think the idea of minimalism is really about when it comes to creative work? I don't think it's just about having as little as possible. While that is certainly a facet of minimalism, I don't think it's the real definition. Instead, I would argue that maybe one of the better definitions of minimalism is simply only having what you need. And I think this is why Skrillex's Quest for Fire is one of the best examples of minimalism in contemporary popular music outside of film scoring and experimental music. During the production of the track Rumble, it was noted that Fortet's main contribution to the track was simply to make sure that it wasn't overproduced. And 
that was maybe the most important role of all. Skrillex's approach here on much of Quest for Fire is echoed across so many different modern genres and writing styles, and I hear this a lot around the Nashville scene here referred to as the Rule of Three. The Rule of Three for songwriting, more or less, states that our brains can really only focus on about three things at a time in a piece of music. So, generally speaking, in an arrangement you don't want or really need more than three things to be happening at any given moment. Now, I'd really like to challenge you here to think about a lot of your favorite music, and especially a lot of popular music across any genre, country, techno, rap, whatever, and list out how many things are really happening at the same time. Now, I'm sure there might be more than three tracks going on, you know, kick, snare, vocal, background vocal, and whatever, but only more or less three things can really be given the focus at any time. If you think about something like the Nickelback track, Someday, I believe it was noted that the final chorus of that track had a hundred plus tracks going on in the arrangement. But when you listen back to that song, and especially that final chorus, how many of those things are really given the focus? Probably just the drums, the guitar, and the vocal, or about three things. So all that blathering out of the way, it might be worth asking, What's the damn point here? I think it's that minimalism in music isn't about doing as little as possible, it's about only doing what's necessary to communicate the core idea. Because of approaching things from a minimalist standpoint, we're forced to strip away the fluff and the core idea has to be as strong as possible, which means it's often something that writes itself and isn't choked out under layers of things we add to solve the problem of a fundamentally boring musical idea. Now all this is nice to sit here and chin stroke and talk about, but what are you actually going to do with the information I've given you here? There are so many ways you can implement this idea of minimalism in your process, regardless of whatever it is you're making. It could be as easy as just learning to simplify your song structure. If you've got a bunch of stuff going on, how much of that is really necessary? Could you try and follow the rule of three? Is there something that could be given more definition? Is there something that could change significantly by altering how many things are happening? Is everything here truly necessary? You could simply just limit the number of parts and tracks. I mean, the Beatles' first record was recorded on two tracks, so what could you maybe do with eight? What could you do with six? What could you do with four? This is especially fun as a creative challenge. This is also really useful for the more technical side of music production when it comes to things like mixing and mastering or sound design, because minimalism is ultimately just about being as intentional as possible with things. If you're doing something like adding EQ or effects or different instruments to the arrangement or something, make sure you're not doing it out of habit, but instead with an ability to answer those all too easily forgotten questions. Why exactly are you doing this? What is doing this adding to the final result? Is this really making a difference? And is it really necessary? I think this idea of a minimalist mindset in music is also really great for people who are stuck with a sense of writer's block or just that creative challenge that they can't seem to overcome. So if you need to write something and you want to write something but you don't know what, just write as little as possible. There's really nothing that says every song has to have some form of set structure or a set of elements. And if and when it does to a degree in styles like maybe drum and bass or something, then breaking these rules might lead you to something really innovative and interesting or groundbreaking to your own style. I would argue that like nine times out of 10, whenever you're facing some sort of creator's block or writer's block, it's just because you're afraid of what the thing you're doing won't be. And especially in the context of modern electronic music production or something like that, it's not without good reason. When it comes to doing this stuff, there's just a lot to be done. And when every option is open, what do you do? What decision do you make? How do you get started? And how do you know when something is actually done? I guess the idea here is if you remove the presumed necessity of doing everything, then you only have to do what's needed. Maybe the real lesson here is to just never fear simple ideas. Something like setting a challenge, like creating a song with only four tracks, not only forces a focus on manageable ideas, but instantly eliminates so many of the potential pitfalls within the process of creating. I think for any of us, it's easy to argue that in music, the clearer your execution, the better you convey the core feeling, and that's really what music is all about. And the more focused your ideas are, the more even small changes can result in something entirely new or more profound. Music is all just a top-down thing. 
isn't it? I mean, you can't master your way out of a bad mix, you can't mix your way out of a bad arrangement, you can't arrange your way out of a boring song, and you can't sound design or auto-tune your way out of just a fundamentally crappy idea. And I would argue that good ideas outweigh technical execution every single time. I mean, listen to early Metallica records or something, or genres like garage rock, or even stuff like no-fi punk or something like that. I mean, if these weren't viable musical ideas, then they wouldn't exist and we wouldn't know or care about them. So maybe we're all putting too much pressure on the wrong thing here. Maybe all it takes is just an idea. Maybe it's time to say more by doing less. Maybe the less you do, the more you're gonna be able to execute on it. And maybe all it takes to get that next thing done is as simple as just one little idea. So that's it. That's your homework. Get out. Go home.